It is day two and no, I have not left my closet. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm not gonna shove things in corners. The goal is to get rid of unnecessary things to make your life easier. Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today is all about Swedish death cleaning. I have spent the last seven days doing this process in this master closet and a couple other areas in my home, but predominantly in this closet. Today, I'm going to show you some footage of what that has been like. I'm going to talk about the pain points, the things you should know before you start Swedish death cleaning, and I'm really glad that you're here. The, the basic principle, I'm not going to go through all the principles. I'm not even going to take you through all the steps because I really want you to read the book. Basic principle is we are all going to die and we don't know when and we don't want our belongings to be a burden on the people that we love. That's it. And I think for me, it has really become this catalyst for becoming a more mindful consumer. I am not going to become a minimalist. Don't worry. I love my stuff. I think we all know that I like beautiful things. What I do want to be is a mindful consumer. I don't want to buy things just to buy them. I want to buy things that will last. I want to buy things that will bring me joy and not things that will make me feel burdened or worse, make the people I love feel burdened when I'm no longer on this earth. Now, I am 53 years old, so my hope is that I have many, many decades of beautiful life left ahead of me, but the truth is, no matter how old you are, none of this is certain. None of us know how long we're going to be here, and I think living in this idea that every day can be your last is, is not depressing. It's actually really freeing. And I'm excited for you if you're watching this video because you're probably just starting on this journey. So yeah, let me get into all of it with you and uh, we'll come back and talk about it in just a minute. Here's where we are after our first day of this situation. Um, it looks really bad, really bad. But, um, you know, it is called the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning and I can't do any more today or I will no longer feel gentle. I promise this is going to get better as we go. Just hang in there with me. Behind me is the travel section of my closet. I know it's absurd that I have a travel section, but I do. And it just gets filled with crap. Like every time I come home from a trip, I feel like there's just these like little odds and ends and little pieces of things that I, at the time, I don't think are trash, but really I'm never going to use again. And I'm just sorting through all that. I mean, it's everything from uh, little pouches that airlines have given me to amenities from hotels, um, to just things that I've collected over the years of being a travel vlogger. And there's a lot of it. So I'm looking at kind of a pile of trash over there. I found a few broken GoPros randomly. Um, just stuff I don't need anymore and I don't use and it's time to release it. Okay, I've come out for a little Diet Coke break and all I really have to say about this process is I have not been organizing the right way. I, every single time I've organized, I have had things that I have just like shoved in corners and not like actually dealt with. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to shove things in corners. I'm not going to put things not where they belong. I'm going to do this correctly. And it is so tedious, so tedious, but I feel like it's going to be worth it. It's just taking for flipping ever. And it's so much harder than just like doing a, I don't know, a linen closet do over that's really for you guys, because then I can do it and film it. And everybody loves like the sped up video and all the things, and this ain't that. So I hope this is even interesting to watch as a video. It might be super, super boring. Now here's a little B-roll of me reading the book, which it's so absurd when I do this because obviously I had to set up my camera and film myself. So, you know, but just so you know, I actually did read the book and I actually did finish it while I was doing the process. So, you know, Here's an illustration of me doing that. Okay, it is now day three. This is my third day working still in my closet and bathroom. And this is our pile of donations so far. So, hmm. And this needs to be donated too. <laughs> this has dust on it. That's disgusting. But we have these kind of weird, let me show you guys these weird little um, attic access 
closets. And that's where this was. So this is going to be, I, I think I need to throw this away instead of donating it. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I suppose I, it's, it still works as a suitcase. So Goodwill may have someone that would want that. Um, and it does, I mean, it, that's tape. It's not like damaged. Um, and it was a really great suitcase and it's, it still works for all the things. So I think I will go ahead and donate that. Okay, it's Saturday morning, and I'm tackling this little chest of drawers right here, and I don't even know what to say. This is kind of where I've been throwing stuff that comes out of travel bags. Can you see Sadie, or hear Sadie? She's talking to me. Anyway, most of it is just trash. Also, there's like all these uh, bags that I use to pick up the dog poop, and the only thing I can think, obviously they're clean bags, the only thing I can think is that they were like in... No, Lenny, they were like in my pockets of jackets maybe, and I emptied it, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so at this point, I was ready to give up. But unfortunately, I was too far in to give up, right? I couldn't just call it a day. Things were everywhere, trash was everywhere, donations were everywhere. I had to see it through, I had to finish it out. And that is both a, a good place to be and it's also very depressing because I was just starting to get very physically tired. But sitting here now, standing here now, standing here now, I'm so grateful that I pushed through and that I finished the process. And we're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. So yeah, let's go back to the footage. Okay, so I am, three days into this and I am still in my master closet and I was just, I'm rereading the actual book and she's talking about how you really want to devote at least a week to each section in your home and sometimes it might even take longer. So <laughs> I am trying to never have to do this again. So I am really thinking through decisions. I am really taking time to put things, if they don't belong in here, where do they belong? If it's something that I want to keep, what does that look like in terms of storage or, or where should it live? How can I group things together? And I'm trying not to work more than an hour to two hours every day so that I don't get overwhelmed. The whole theory behind this, and I think the reason that I am gravitating towards this as opposed to other organizational styles is that I can take my time and it is gentle and it is methodical. I do recognize that not everybody has time like I have right now to do this. This is a great summer project for me. Um, this would be very challenging to do if your kids were still home, if you were working a job that was, you know, 50 hours a week outside the home, which I did for a long time. But for me right now, this is the way I'm choosing to do it. And it's feeling a lot less, I don't know, um, manic and a lot more peaceful and balanced, which is what I am all about right now. <music> this without being a mess. I love that for you, but I cannot. Um, this is by far the worst part of the process because you've done all the work you think. And like, I could go sit in my closet right now and it's so beautiful and lovely, but I have all of the remains of the day as they say. So, um, yeah, we're going to get there. Last two weeks ago, I took a bunch of e-waste to the electronic recycling place. Um, by our house, which was amazing to unload all of that. And then today with the 1-800 junk guys coming, you may have a local junk company that you work with. That's probably a better choice. Um, we're using 1-800 Got Junk because we've used them before and it's quick and they'll come today and I just need stuff gone. Um, but always, you know, check and see if there's a, a local company that will come and get your stuff. But yeah, I've got some organizing to do and I'm starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. And just for this part of this project. Okay, so I am now going to Goodwill. Um, we've got a box and tons of bags. I have some other clothes that I am still looking for good homes for that I may end up selling. If I can't find, I don't know. I, I, I would rather donate them 
they're nice. So I may try to find like a women's shelter that I can donate them to when it's like specific clothes that I know could be used by someone like going to a job interview or whatever. That's normally my first choice. I have not done that yet since we've lived in Atlanta. There was a women's shelter that I really liked in um, Dallas where we used to live. So I'm sure there's one here. So I have a separate bag for that. And then this is all my other clothes. One thing of note, and sorry that the air conditioning is running, but it is approximately 1 million degrees today. Um, if you live in Atlanta, you know, uh, or anywhere in the South or anywhere in the United States right now for that matter. But I never donate anything that is stained or ripped or anything. I only donate to Goodwill clothes that are in really good shape. Um, the rest I either relegate to rags or try to figure out some other use for them. But the ones that are back here are clothes that can be reused, some household items that can be sold and reused. And so off to Goodwill we go. Today was good. The 1-800-JUNK people came taking the stuff to Goodwill and then we are calling it good enough for today because I'm getting tired and it's really hot. So it's Saturday morning. My bed is not made. The dogs, what is going on with my hair? I don't know. The dogs are on the bed, which they're not supposed to be, whatever. Um, and I'm down to like the last little foolish notions, which I have to be honest with you. I'm not sure this is the same for everybody. The big things have been fairly easy for me to go through quickly. But when I get down to like little spools of thread, I literally never do my own repairs. Like if I have something broken, even a button to sew on, and I'm not, I'm not proud of this. My friend Jess, whose channel is all about sewing, would just be stunned at this, but I barely even sew on. I know how to sew on a button. I just take it to my dry cleaner because she's a seamstress and she's amazing. Um, little, like one shoelace. I don't know, maybe I'll need one shoelace. Blue painter's tape, why that's in my bedroom, I have no idea. Loads of these, how many pencil sharpeners or like beauty pencil sharpeners does a person need? I have way too many. Um, what is this? That's a business card, business cards. Little things like this, which actually these are super helpful, um, but they weren't anywhere where I could find them. Just like random shit. So anyway, going through and putting all of the random shit into the places, sorry, I never swear on this channel, but this video calls for it putting everything where it actually belongs. And then if I have duplicates of an item, disposing of those duplicates, this part takes for flippin' ever. Thank you for coming to my non-TED talk. I'm sure I will have talked about this more. I'm gonna set you guys down. Um, the goal with Swedish deaf cleaning, I'm actually gonna rebraid my hair while we talk. The goal with Swedish deaf cleaning is not, in fact, um, to become a minimalist, at least if I'm understanding the book correctly, right? The goal is to get rid of unnecessary things to make your life easier and so that you can surround yourself just with things that you love and not leave your belongings to be a burden for someone else. It does not, does not mean that you, that braid is not turning out right. It does not mean that you're not, um, buying new things. Like if, if you really want something, you can go out and you can get it. And next week I'm going to do a video about what I bought myself for my birthday and I got some stuff. So it, it isn't, I, I've never really connected with minimalism. It's just not my thing. Like I enjoy things. I like having, what does she say in uh, Maureen O'Hara in A Quiet Man? in the quiet, the quiet man. If you've not seen that movie, it's really good. But the whole thing about how she wants her things about her. I like having my things about me. My things are important to me. They don't define me, but they're important to me. And I don't apologize for that. I never want to get rid of all my things. I never want to move into a tiny house. I like my things. I want to be aware of what I have and know the resources that went into purchasing them and the resources that go into maintaining them. And I, I want things to be orderly in a way that brings me joy. So this is not about just getting rid of everything. I did the KonMari method before we left our house in Houston, and I still have regrets about things, not Houston. No, I've lived too many places. Before we left our house in uh, Coppell in Dallas, um, 
and I still have things that I regret getting rid of. So it's not about that for me. It's just about appreciating what I have and knowing what I have, taking inventory and making sure that I am surrounding myself with things that actually make me happy and not things that weigh me down. So, yeah. So a quick note here on other people's crap. You cannot do anything about that. I know that that's painful, but if, if they're still alive, they have to be responsible for their own crap. And you may even be the person that would have to clean up their crap if they should die. It doesn't matter. We cannot do this process for other people. Just like we learn in recovery, you cannot ever, you know, make someone stop drinking. You can never make someone stop doing drugs. You can never make someone stop being codependent. You can never make someone clean up their clutter. It has to be their own process and their own journey. So just shove it aside, close the door. You can nag them if you want, but really ultimately you're not responsible for other people's behavior. And it's our job to keep our own side of the street clean, which Taylor Swift was not the first one to say that, but she is fond of the saying. I am so sick of being in this closet. This is the part they never can show you on the shows. I'm done now. I'm done. We're going to call this done. I thought I was done day before last, and then I did a second round. I discovered a whole bunch of other stuff, and then I thought I was done yesterday uncovered yet another box. Like, I swear, I think people are coming in here in the middle of the night and hiding things that I did not know I had in this closet. I think I've decided that I am a pack rat. I, I don't like visual clutter. So what I do is I stuff things in drawers and boxes and little bins. And so it looks really clean. And I feel like I've been a little bit of a fraud on my channel because I have cleaned out this closet with you guys multiple times and it is occurring to me now after four days of work in here that I have never done it correctly. So I'm going to show you around. I'm not saying this is how you should do your closet. I'm saying this is where my closet needs to be so that I feel like I am just living with things that I love, that I care about, that I wear, and that I have time to care about and to love and to make sure that I'm actually taking advantage of everything and stuff doesn't just get shoved aside and never worn. You know, a resource that you never use is not valuable to you. So you need to release it. And I have learned a lot in this process, but I'm going to do a quick, this whole video is not about before and after of my closet. This whole video is about doing the internal work. And I see that now. And it's, it's, uh, it's been really transformational for me. So it's not that this closet is going to be this big, you know, big to da moment. It's more what paring down and realizing that although I will never call myself a minimalist, this is the way I want to live. I want to live in a conscientious way where I know what I have, I appreciate what I have, I use what I have, and I don't accumulate stuff just to accumulate stuff. So hold on, I'm going to show you around. Here are the things that I'm taking away from doing this process. Number one, it is going to take way longer than you think. I found out about myself that I'm actually kind of a pack rat, that I don't have big things that are cluttered, but I love to stuff things in drawers and stuff things in boxes. I'm very much out of sight, out of mind. And that was painful. The big things were not a big deal, but finding like handbags with just loose little pieces of things and old like thumbtacks and coins from all over the world and receipts and expired medications and just like the little teeny things that are the stuff of life that just need to be thrown away. That took for flipping ever and it was a little bit exhausting. So that's my number one thing is it's going to take way longer than you think. Number two, it is going to be emotional. Uh, working through even things that were not classified as memories, even things like my grandmother's sweater that I found, uh, different 
I don't know, like running shirts from races that I had run, different receipts from restaurants where I had eaten, things that were so evocative of so many different memories for me. Um, that took an emotional toll that I was not expecting. Probably didn't help that I was also like simultaneously watching the show because the show is also very emotionally taxing. But I think it's good for me to have to look those things square in the eye, to not constantly be shying away from the emotions around my children growing up, around my own mortality, around people that I have lost. All of those different things boiled up to the surface. So I should have been more prepared for that, and I wasn't. And then the last thing I will say on this is had I known how gratifying it would be I would have done it three years ago when I read the book originally. This process is so worth doing. I think moving to becoming a more mindful consumer might be one of the biggest evolutions for me of my 50s, really realizing that my relationship to my stuff was not a healthy one, that I want to have things around me. If you've seen the movie, The Quiet Man, which if you haven't, it's a classic. You should go watch it. She talks a lot. It's Catherine O'Hara, and she talks about how she just wants her things around her. I want the things that are around me to be things that I have chosen because they make me happy and they bring me joy. So if that's something that you are looking to do, if you've done other decluttering methods and you've only maybe gotten halfway there, I think this is a fabulous thing to do, but you really have to be ready for it. You have to take your time. You have to do the work. You can't just walk out of this YouTube video and go spend 15 minutes and have it be done. It takes a long time. So the point of this after walkthrough is not so much to show you how great I am at organizing or how beautiful my closet is, but more to just give you a sense of what it feels like now to be in this space. It's impossible for me to adequately explain to you how nice it is to know exactly what is in here, to know that everything contained in this closet is something that I truly love, that I truly care about, that I am truly taking care of appropriately. There's nothing lost. There's nothing stuck inside of a bag or in a drawer. It may seem like a lot to some people, but to me, this is what I love. This is what I want to have in my space. And it now just feels like it can breathe. There are some empty drawers, there's empty boxes, there's places for me to grow, but it is just so much more intentional and it's just making me really, really happy but I'm rooting for you and I know that you can do it. So I hope that you have great success. I hope whatever you're doing today, you're finding joy. And if what you're doing today is Swedish deaf cleaning, I hope this video has helped you on your journey. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.